big <laughs> cluster fuck. Well, I mean, if, if if it went smooth, it wouldn't really be our podcast. That's true. We we might actually come off as semi professional, which we can't have. So. No. No, we can't have. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, Buck. Um, yeah, PG and E, man. That's uh, that's what I have. They uh, <laughs> they're they're really good at killing people. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna leave that at that. Uh, yes, the known for their uh, heavily maintained network, PG and E. <laughs> they okay okay pg and e in the last like in the i think it's like since 2017 they have killed enough people and they have paid out enough money that they have finally decided that it is cost uh, effective to take the time to bury lines wow finally they finally figured that out Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah, um, yeah, power outage. Power outages are fun, aren't they? Yeah, I thought we were gonna have one here the other day because we had a really, really bad thunderstorm and like. Did you guys? Did did you guys get snow? We it snowed last night. It didn't stick, but it did Mm -hmm. snow pretty good last night. Um, Thankfully. Ground's still warm enough. It melted it all. So it just made our walk on uh, the the haunted trail that we went on super <laughs> slippery, which was great because it's all hills. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, Josh um, Josh down there in Colorado Springs, they said he was getting uh, um, the weatherman said one to three inches. And they got like a foot and a half, which is the complete opposite of what his girl was <laughs> expecting and got <laughs> <laughs> yes oh my god that's yeah I saw the pictures that's horrifying I don't like snow at all I don't want that to happen here I do no it's a terrible terrible thing I have to I just, shovel okay, it and... okay hold on hold on I want snow here just for the people watching Right, because if, if it snowed here, people would lose their goddamn minds. It would be hilarious, mm-hmm. and it's not completely unheard of, if memory serves. No, we have had it before here, and it was just trace. It was like hit the ground and melt, not enough to uh, to last very long. It did freeze that night, so we did have some some fun ice, but uh. Like Mount Mount Diablo, Mount Diablo gets snow. I think Mount, top of Mount Diablo is like uh, like 30, 3,600, 3,800, something like that. No, so that gets that gets snow every year. Yeah, but down, see, but down here, down here, I'm only one hundred and twenty six feet. <laughs> yeah, that's you're what two hundred and fifty feet lo- closer to sea level than I am, <laughs> and I am just by driving. 35 minutes i'm like at i think it's like 2500 feet above sea level Mm -hmm. so but don't worry they're not mountains yeah they're they're just bluffs (laughs) we have those across the river they're like 100 feet tall yeah they're well the one that's up above the city here that Mark Twain wrote about is like 550 feet, I want to say, or something tall. Yeah. Higher yeah, than we, the city. So, yeah, we got them across the river here, but they're um, like 100 feet, but they're all sand. And that's where they built all those wind turbines on, on the sand. Oh. Isn't that like a, a parable of some kind about building things on sand? <laughs> I feel like that in and of itself is a parable of the uh, wind <laughs> energy uh, industry. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I was going to make a Don Quixote reference, but people wouldn't. Most people. Because <laughs> we are, we are, we are not a big brain podcast. Our, our listeners would not get, <laughs> would not get a reference to Don Quixote. <laughs> 
It's like the the is that, is um, that the tequila the, guy? Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, uh, you know he's he's pretty unpopular in Denmark. Um, <laughs> in Holland. Yes. Would but, you uh, stop it? <laughs> Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So hello, hello, hello. Now that we're five and a half minutes into this, welcome to the. What the fuck are you doing? There's like a fruit fly buzzing around, and it's getting really obnoxious. Calm down, Mister Miyagi. You're not going to catch a fly. I catch fruit flies all the time. Are you a lizard? I are mean, you, practically. Um, hashtag Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> like lick my own eye real quick. <laughs> Blink second eyelids. <laughs> Look, Ma, I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Zuckerberg. Uh, but hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Anarchy Monk Friends Roundtable Discussion. Before we get started, let me first remind you that we are covered by the BIPCOT No Government License, which allows for the use and the reuse of this podcast by anyone and everyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more about that at bipcot.org. That's B I P C O T dot O R G. We're also covered by Brandenburg v. Ohio 1969, which ruled that the government cannot punish inflammatory speech unless that speech is, quote, directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Therefore, everything said here on Anarchy Monk Friends Roundtable Discussion is entirely hypothetical. This is episode 232. And I guess we're. We're so back, kind of ish. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. That's weird. It's yeah. man, October is a crazy month. Okay, it's a crazy. Yeah, we haven't, month we haven't, me. we haven't recorded in a month. Yeah, no, nah, it doesn't. That doesn't surprise me. It's, it, mm-hmm. it's just such a crazy month. I got so much stuff going on, and like next weekend, I have a bunch of stuff going on still, and it just once you hit the end of September, like everything goes insane. Well, you guys have heavy falls, right? Because you guys mm-hmm. got heavy winters. So you guys got to jam everything into like 17, so like seven weeks of fall in the, in the summer fall. Well, yeah. I mean, and it's insane because to put in perspective, like last night when we were out, I had to wear a hoodie and then my wool coat over top of that and gloves and, you know, and a wool hat and everything. And to be outside, and less than 24 hours prior, it was 72 degrees. <laughs> I woke up the other morning at like 4.30, quarter to 5, got up, went into the living room, opened the front door, which I always do, and I we have a box fan that sits there. Uh, and I turned that fan towards me, toward my spot on the couch, just so that it was cold enough that I could wear my hoodie. <laughs> and I got to I got to wear my hoodie for about an hour. Isn't isn't California like supposed to be full of basic bitches? Like, how do you basic bitch in that heat? I don't understand. Like, basic bitches will sweat for fashion. It's just because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, you can't throw on like the the North Face, the North Face puffy vest and the. The furry boots. No, hold on. Hold on. And... First, 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 you have you have to stop with the North Face because that's too expensive. That's cost prohibitive. You got to start with like the uh, like the second mark knockoffs. <laughs> and there's a huge knockoff market here. Oh yeah, I have no doubt. It's, <laughs> it's so, but there's also there's also different degrees of hoodies. Like I have I have super thin hoodies and I have thicker hoodies. So. Like you, you can wear a thinner hoodie when it's sixty and not feel bad, not feel warm. But like, if I were to wear my, if I were to wear my thicker hoodie at sixty, I'd be fucking sweating. Yeah, I mean that's like I have, I have a hoodie, a couple of hoodies that are like super thick t-shirt, more or less. Mm -hmm. And so, like those, you can wear in warmer weather. Yeah, like a jersey, like a jersey, jersey. uh, Yeah, texture. Yeah. Yeah, like I have a couple of those, and then I have like my, I have my wooby hoodie. Which, if it's anything over forty degrees, you're going to die yeah. if you wear that. 
And then I have even thicker and heavier than that is my Cryptek hoodie. It's like this mm. fleece lined in the the yep. lined hoodie. Yeah, it's ridiculously warm. So mm. like, and in the middle of winter, I can wear that this vest mm. over top of it, and then my coat, and I'll still be a little chilly. Yeah. Like that's how cold it gets here. So. <laughs> yeah, they're lucky to have Columbia for getting North Coast. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, w- I just uh, went the into beautiful, the beautiful, store. beautiful, beautiful case. He said it started snowing in Vermont today. Oh, uh, Vermont is, is pretty in the fall. Dude, the the pictures that she's posted, uh, like the fall pictures, she's posted a few of them. Um, I'm so jealous that we don't get that out here. Yeah, in like, California, you're like, oh, look, that tree is changing color. No, it's just dead. <laughs> it's just dead. <laughs> <laughs> we have... Uh, uh, no, Dave, you're not 32 minutes late. You're like, you're 10 minutes late. Maybe 15, <laughs> maybe 12, something there. No, because we don't, we don't have a, we don't have a bunch of deciduous trees. Most of our trees out here are carnivorous, or carnivorous, conifers. <laughs> <laughs> Just carnivorous trees. Carnivorous. Limbs are, off of passersby all the time. Are <laughs> conifers, so they don't lose their leaves. Uh, the only way that like conifers will change. Um, is the uh, the the pine bark beetles? Yeah, or um, Ross or if they're on fire from PG&E. Yeah, or <laughs> fire. <laughs> the only way they change color is when they change to red and very hot. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, then you get oh. pre cooked squirrels. Was it is it bristlecone pine that needs fire to reproduce? Uh, most conifers need fire to reproduce. Yeah, they can't. They can't redwoods, open redwoods specifically cones. are. Um, they can't produce without their, their pine cones won't open without the heat. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was going to say, cause it's specifically set up so that the fire burns away all of their competitors and then they can immediately take over and don't have anything blocking. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we do, we, burn redwood. we do have some deciduous, like we do get, we do have oaks, um, but we don't have like those maples and those, those elms that, that like Vermont's famous for. Oh, like I've posted um, like drone footage going up over the bluffs outside of town here in the fall before on like Facebook and stuff. And everyone's like, holy crap, that's gorgeous. Yeah, we actually, we literally have like for car clubs, we'll do color runs where we literally just drive like two hours just to look at the colors. There you go. And come back in. So there was just one a couple weekends ago that was a European one. So it's all like Porsches and Ferraris, uh-huh. Lamborghinis, Alphas. <sighs> it was a lot of it was it was a lot of fun. That was that's a cool one. Um, Supercar weekend's really cool at Imola. So we get a lot of cool stuff, but it's mostly in the Twin Cities, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't get that stuff here either because people steal those cars. <laughs> No, yeah. like okay, okay. So I I don't I don't have this article. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up the whole thing, but there's an article uh in the Contra Costa Times, that's my county, Contra Costa Times, about Antioch Police Department. That's my police department. <laughs> the mayor is asking the county sheriff for help because half half of the eighty seven officers currently uh, employed by the Antioch police are either on suspension <laughs> or on restricted duty uh, because they were caught in the racist text um, uh, uh, muck. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. First off, so the, 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 the city off like the city budget authorizes like a hundred and 112 police or something like that. So they only have 87 of 112 first off. And then half of that 87 are suspended or unrestrictive. Yes. Yep. That's. Ah. Woo. Yeah, it's, a that's liber- pretty- it's a libertarian wonderland. <sighs> yeah. So much fun. Oh, hooray. Yay, hooray. California. Yay, the yeah. coast. There's a reason that Wisconsinites have a term for people from the coast <laughs> that are very obviously from the coast. We call them coasties. I'm not from the coast. I'm over an hour from the coast. If you're from 
any state that borders an ocean, you are from the coast. You are a ghosty. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Although you can be from here and still be a coasty. Like if you are rocking like Columbia, North Face, whatever, uh-huh. and you're, you know, the you're rocking the fake Valley Girl accent and you know drinking your pumpkin spice and shit. Like you can still be a coasty. <laughs> Uh, Dave, like um, uh, Mr. Guns and Gears Telegram chat, racist. <laughs> if, if you're on Telegram, if you know, you know. If, if you've been in any chats like that, you know how racist that it's, really it's, is. It's, it's it's unregulated. Yeah, yeah. It is not a little bit. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah, now that we're like. I don't know. What are we? Fifteen minutes in. Were we gonna? Were we gonna talk about that stripper article tonight? I feel like we should talk about that stripper article tonight. Which one? Um. What was that one? Thank you, Senate. There's a couple stripper ones. There was. There's the one about the stripper that stole a car to go to a, a interview, and then she returned it and thought everything would be okay because she returned it. I gave it back. No, the the one the um, the pharma one from the New York Post. Oh, I no, I didn't. I didn't grab that one. Um, it's in the chat if you want to grab it though. Yeah, I feel like we need to talk about that one. One because we need to talk about that one, but two because it involves a stripper. And what would Anarchy Among Friends be without at least one mention? Okay, okay. Can we can, before we get to that? I, I'll, I'll grab that. But before we get to that. There's a hidden article that I, of course, didn't share. Um, and I am not going to read the headline because I want you to read the headline. So I'm going to drop that article in the chat for you. And I want you to just start reading. What? <laughs> Student petition. Requested glory holes in campus lecture hall, along with free condoms and licking cloths. The hell is a licking cloth? <laughs> what does that even mean? I, I don't know. I mean, it is German, so like none of this necessarily surprises me. <laughs> no, it, it is. I don't know what a licking cloth is. Let's see. Um. Students at the students at the University of Oz, Augsburg have called for handicap accessible glory holes to be installed on campus, citing <laughs> diversification. Uh, wait, wait, Hold wait! On. The students Whoa. have the students argue that having spaces for anonymous sex would ensure the safety of queer students. The students also required the holes to be quote soundproof and opaque. And expected school maintenance staff to regularly clean them. I so they they requested the addition of glory holes to campus bathrooms in addition to condoms, knee pads, licking wipes, and other sanitary products. The fuck is a licking wipe? What is that? Not something I'm gonna Google. That (laughs) (laughs) that's what you're having trouble with. I mean. The rest of it, I just accept that it's Germany, and so I am absolutely... Have you ever seen a John Thompson film? I am unsurprised by anything perverse from Germany. I am not <laughs> looking up John Thompson films. Oh, don't. Don't Google that. And if you're going to Google that, make sure that you're doing it in one of those uh, incognito browsers. Uh, but I... Three glory hill holes are to be built in the lecture hall center opposite the entrance where the information boards are currently located. You do not need to know what is going on on campus. You only need to know that there is a glory hole. Yes. The the words, the words handicapped, accessible, and glory hole going together are deeply troubling as it is. The, the part about it being a, um, <laughs> going to be installed on campus, citing diversification. 
the students argue that having spaces for anonymous sex would ensure the safety of queer students. I, I don't understand how that works. A glory hole would contribute to diversification on campus as kink could also be experienced or lived at the university. Sex can also be a relaxing activity, which can be very useful in the often stressful university life, the petitioners explain. Are you kidding me? It's a college. Are you trying to insinuate that that's not already a thing at a college? I've been to colleges. I'm telling you, <laughs> all of that already happens. You don't need to build handicapped accessible glory holes in the student bathrooms in order for kink to happen. Not, in, not in student bathrooms. Not in student bathrooms. By the information boards. So this would, this would be public. Well, let's see. I'm trying to find the place where I go to eat. So, oh, hello. And so, what? <laughs> like, what? Buck, Buckshot is confused by the mechanics of a handicapped glory hole. Setting this up at a university is not only inappropriate, but also highly scandalous and unacceptable, the school's Ring Christian Democratic Students Group said. Such an yeah. idea not only contradicts principles of educational institutions, but also represents a serious violation of ethical and moral standards. The student council met to discuss the proposal and ultimately considered it a joke motion and will not pursue it further. I mean, I hope it's a joke. Because <laughs> uh, with the, the, the way Germany is going right now, you don't know. Oh, uh, well, and simultaneously, I just also want to point out that simultaneously, Germany has also now finally upped its military budget for the first time in history to over like five billion. Yeah. As Russia is fighting in Ukraine, public handicap glory holes are not on my 2023. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> apparently they should have been. I. <laughs> That's like, that sentence is like, you've just, you, you've thrown darts at a board. Yes. And like one board is like Pornhub search records. And the other is like, uh, like, like wish.com AI, wish AI bot. Yeah. But like, like one board, one board Pornhub. is, yeah. One board is, one board is pH and the other one is like progressive uh, policy bingo. <laughs> and like, you've just thrown darts at both of them and then put together a sentence based on what you hit. You don't want handicapped kids to have access to glory holes in public. <laughs> fucking <rip. laughs> I, I, you're literally a Nazi, Andrew. You're a Nazi just, for not apparently. wanting, you're a Nazi for not wanting handicapped kids to have access to glory holes in public with licking. I, what the fuck is a licking cloth? What is I think, it? I think it's a wet wipe. Is it a wet? But is it like that's what, that's what I'm gonna go with as a wet wipe? What is that associated with? What are you licking? Are you licking the cloth? Is it? Are you wiping things with the cloth so that you can then lick it? I don't. Now I have more questions that I do not I... want the answers to. Like part of me, right? The autistic part of me is like I need to know. But then the like rational part of my brain that understands that maybe we don't need to know absolutely all of the answers is like <laughs> what <laughs> yes but do you do you need to know and no no i don't i don't think i do you know what's going to happen though now is in the chat somebody is going to tell us what the hell a licking wipe is and it's going to be horrible i don't i don't want to know i don't want to know either not really i don't want to know okay let's I mean, we can't move on, but let's try to move on. <laughs> no, Buckshot, it can't be L-shaped because then the mechanics on the out... Well, I suppose, though, if they also wanted knee pads, I guess that kind of makes sense because... Never mind. We're not... No, we're not doing this. What if it's... <laughs> if it's if it's portable and it's just like a green suit with like a little piece of wall? He just put on a John Cena mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, why, why'd you have to go there? You just, you just, you just made it. You just made it weird. <laughs> they come, 
dude wheels his wheelchair out of the glory hole and John Cena <laughs> <laughs> falls over people's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Wisco says they're uh, uh, dental dams. Oh, that's why that that Fucking doesn't that does dude. that does not help the imagination at all. It doesn't either. I what did do? No, oh, I don't know. The autism has peaked. Okay. Um, well, if anyone can engineer it, the Germans can. Yes, I. <laughs> yes. That is not not a version of the Candyman that I ever want to hear. If anyone killed it, the Germans can. No, no, let's <laughs> let's not go there. History has shown <laughs> it's not. You hear Third Reich playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> the Deutschland Uber alles begins increasing yeah. in volume. <laughs> oh, we're literally Nazis. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the stripper article Andrew mentioned. Uh, stripper uh, pharma firm used me to push fit in all the doctors. Now, Emily Bont's playing me on Netflix. So, Big Pharma has strippers is the takeaway here. Um, yeah. I... Um, Sunrise Lee was a stripper at Rachel's in West Palm Beach, Florida when she when she danced for a regular who slipped her his number. But Alex Berlikoff was not a lonely customer propositioning her for sex. In reality, he was recruiting her to push doctors to overprescribe highly addictive opioids. What? They would never. They would never, yeah. Uh, quote, dancers are the best salespeople, he told Lee, a single mom of two desperate for a break. Within weeks, she was the manager of Mid Atlantic Sales for Eyes for Inslee's Therapeutics. That's I N S Y S Inslee's Therapeutics as part of a brazen bribery ring, pushing doctors to prescribe a fentanyl spray in dangerous quantities and far beyond its intended use. Now Lee's story is being told on the Netflix film Pain Hustlers which was released Friday and starring Emily Blunt, Chris Evans, and Catherine O'Hara. I mean, it's a, it's a compelling, like that's got Hollywood written all over it. Like literally recruiting strippers to sell drugs to doctors. To encourage doctors to sell. Well, encourage doctors yeah. to over prescribe an incredibly well. I mean, they're damaging... like every time I go into my doctor's office, she has a uh, a bucket up there on in front, uh, and it's the pens from all the pharma the pharmaceutical reps that come around, right? Because they always give pens, right? So she puts the pen in that, and this this bucket, it's like I don't know, it's like two and a half gallons or three gallon bucket, clear bucket. And it's like two thirds of the way full. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Um. So Emily Blunt plays Liza Drake, a blue collar single mom who lost her job and was trying to make ends meet. She lands a job at the failing pharmaceutical company following a chance meeting with sales rep Pete Banner, who is played by Chris Evans who lures her down a morally bankrupt path as she becomes a cog in a dangerous racketeering scheme that involves bribing doctors to give out fentanyl-based drugs, a story based on Enzies. That's Enzies Pharmaceutical. Is it Insys? 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 I don't know. I-N-S-Y-S? Is it Insys? Like in, in, in something in, systems is probably what's the short uh, in, in, Insys would work because we're insisting. Okay. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Insys. Okay. Uh, Insys Therapeutics Subsys Spray was approved by the FDA in 2012 solely to give cancer patients relief from intense breakthrough pain. But Insys bribed doctors to give it to people who did not have cancer and then defrauded health insurance health insurers who did not want to cover it for non-cancer patients. Because insurance was like, but this the only on-label prescription for this is for cancer patients. That's no, I'm not paying you for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and looks like Van Holocaust joined us late. Hello, Chris. Chris is late because he was enjoying the uh, 
handicap accessible glory holes. I knew you were going there. And says, Prime doctors give it to people who do not have cancer and their farted health insurance, health insurers who do not want to cover it for non cancer patients. The corruption plot is the latest chapter in the opioid epidemic to get screen treatment after Hulu's Dope Sick miniseries, which starred Michael Keaton and do- uh, as a doctor who became as addicted as his patients uh, and Netflix's Empire of Pain about the Sackler family whose Purdue Pharmaceuticals fueled the crisis. No. Oh. Uh, Lee went to prison for more than a year for her part in the plot with a jury hearing that she gave a doctor a lap dance as part of the scheme, although she still protests her innocence. Lee's part of the opiate crisis began when she danced for Berkeloff in summer 2012. She told him she was saving money for a new life in Michigan for a new life as a Michigan State University student. In return, she said, quote, I remember him telling me. He was a VP sales manager in pharmaceuticals and thought that dancers were the best salespeople. It definitely makes sense that he was scouting. She was hired in September after Berkeloff helped her prepare for the interview for Scottsdale for the Scottsdale, Arizona company. (sighs) First of all, like that dude was clever as fuck. Like, no, 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 I'm recruiting, which means all of these lap dances and all these champagne rooms. (laughs) It's all a business expense. <laughs> business does it, yeah. Uh, quote, it was an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, Lee told the Post, quote, I thought I can actually have an opportunity to take care of my kids and let the schooling I did pay off. Uh, Ensis, led by founder John Kapoor. Why does that name sound familiar? Um, He was in, if memory serves, he was in the news a bunch when all the, the arrests and all the charges and stuff started happening over the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, incest led by founder, John Kapoor, that's K-A-P-O-O-R, was desperate to join the gold rush unleashed by opioids and willing to break the law to do it. If he wanted, if it wanted doctors to hand out more and more of its spray at higher and higher doses. Executives came up with a system where insists would hold, quote, speaking events for doctors who prescribed the drug, paying them fees for taking part. In reality, the events were shams. Instead of being paid to speak about their medical practices, they were given cash to turn up, uh, quote, speak to empty rooms, go to lavish dinners, which often turned into alcohol-fueled debauches. I mean, those are my favorite kind of debauches, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's not the same if you debauch I, without if, alcohol. If, if, <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't include a handicapped accessible glory hole, it is, is, it is it not tr- a debauch you want to be. Yeah. Is it truly a debauch at all? I mean, really, if it doesn't include German handicapped accessible glory hole. <laughs> it's about equity. Shut up. That's fine. <laughs> Diversification. <laughs> It was at a drunken nightclub trip, uh, nightclub trip in Chicago after one of the dinners in 2012 that a witness told the trial of Lee Kapoor and three other uh, incest executives that the former stripper gave Dr. Paul Madison a lap dance. Uh, Madison jurors heard a quote. Uh, Madison uh, jurors heard ran a quote shady operation in a strip mall, a pill mill, and was later convicted of healthcare fraud for claiming. Uh, for fake prescriptions. Uh, The scheme was busted by the feds in 2016, so this is four years after. Uh, Who managed a third of the sales team was one of the series of executives charged in the RICO, that is the racketeering... Racketeering and something corrupt organization. organization. Yeah. Uh, Kapoor got 66 months. His CEO, Michael Babich, got 30 months. And three other executives also went to prison. In 2020, Lee was sentenced to a year and a day and served eight months in prison in Kentucky. So, yes, yeah, this I mean, that that whole thing, like we all remember, right? We remember 2012 when the opioid epidemic was at its peak and. Everybody told us even back then that, oh, you're nuts when we started saying like, hey, it's because of the overprescription of opioid painkillers and like a ton of us were saying it's the overprescription of opioid painkillers mm-hmm. and especially conservatives conservatives that's the irony is that the conservatives mm-hmm. especially were 
like absolutely not no people are just drug addicts and they're just you know they're all just junkies mm -hmm. and you're like but it's because of the the over prescription of the opioid painkillers it's leading to this directly like doctors are getting them hooked and then taking it away and then mm -hmm. you know and, and don't, don't forget don't forget we we also have like um uh audio of the sackler family discussing discussing how it just absolutely destroyed this entire appalachian region of West Virginia and, and Virginia and just the opiate, just the, the, the overdoses and the crime and, and just absolutely just literally devastated this entire region. And they laughed about it and they said, Oh, we'll find another one. It was yep. all about the money. All it, it was never, just, Big Pharma has never been about because if Big Pharma cared, right, if Big Pharma actually cared about people, oh. if big health care in general actually cared about fixing people, then there would be more cures. But there's not cures. There's treatments. Mm -hmm. Because when you, you care for somebody, the is? they're the no longer is, a customer. The issue is that they just don't have enough strippers. I mean... I personally, I uh, having been in hospitals, I do feel that hospitals could use more strippers, severely lacking in the stripper category. I'm I'm refraining from the making another handicapped glory hole <laughs> joke. It's a very very different Make a Wish Foundation <laughs> wish granting. Uh, <laughs> he's the kid is dying. Come on, give him his wish. Did you did you make up that wish for him? Did did he say that or no? It's just you know no, he he just he just really wished that you and I would go in the back room. <laughs> this is, it's a dying kid's wish. How what how, how dare you say no? I mean, come. On. <sighs> this is why we can't have nice things. This is why I'm no longer allowed to make friends with the kids at the, the, the terminal wards. <laughs> hey, kid, I got an idea for your Make-A-Wish Foundation thing. All right, hear me out here. Yes. <laughs> Although there was that one little girl whose final final wish was to tase a cop, and she is the hero that we needed. Uh, and they let that happen, didn't they? Yeah, they did let her tase a cop. Yeah. Oh, I, need, I think I need cancer now. <laughs> Cause I got I got a whole list. I got a whole list. <laughs> so what's your Make a Wish Foundation list? <laughs> <laughs> well, first I just I just want to say in my defense, <laughs> I don't like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of problems with you people. I'm just I'm a really big fan of reasonable men doing unreasonable things. <laughs> My, my first wish is for a Komatsu D80. <laughs> I'm going to need a welder and some steel. <laughs> a welder and a high supply of face-hardened quarter-inch steel plate. <laughs> Why? Oh, you'll find out. Yeah. I'm making a special uh. birthday vehicle. It'll be great. Oh, oh, okay. That's a good segue. That's a good segue. Uh, we can segue to uh, Marines strapped a rocket launcher to a so-called robotic goat in the California desert in September in a test of robots' ability to carry and fire weapons in battle. Fire! A they bought from a the robot off Amazon. So I could also have my own robotic goat. Yes. Uh, Marines with Tactical Training and Exercise Control Group conducted a proof-of-concept test at 29 Palms, California, a vast installation with many ranges where Marines can do live fire tests and training, according to the Marine Corps news release. Quote, instead of having a Marine handle the weapon system, manipulate the safeties, we could put a remote trigger on a mechanism on it that allowed it all to be done remotely. The Marine could be behind cover and concealment. The weapon system could go forward and the Marine could manipulate the safeties from a safe place while allowing that weapon system to get closer to its target. In a video posted by Marine Corps on, by the Marine Corps on September 9th test, the goat evaded goat evaded motivated goat evaded goat evaded Marines watched as a robotic quadruped stood up on its four haunches of sorts, walked around making clacking sounds on the ground. 
The platform appears to be a Go One robot dog made by the Chinese robotic company Unitree, whose website advertises the quadruped as, quote, lightweight, take it everywhere. Unitree sells the basic version of the of the man's bionic best friend for twenty seven hundred dollars plus a thousand dollars shipping on its website, and for four thousand eight hundred and eighty nine and ninety nine dollars on Amazon. Is that was that what that is? That's what this is right here. These are you can have the six thousand milliamp AI robot dog from Unitree for four thousand eight ninety nine. Uh, they have ones with bigger batteries for fifty eight ninety nine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also get really small ones for actually pretty cheap, should you be so inclined. But yes. I had to know. I like as soon as you said they got it on Amazon, I'm like, all right, let's see what is this going to cost me because I too want to fire a rocket from a robo dog and. Uh, uh, don't forget now. Don't forget now. We have proof of concept. We have 3D printed recoilless rockets. With three, sorry, we have 3D printed recoilless launchers. Yes, they fire cans. Cans. It is the Kanzerfaust. Yes, the Kanzerfaust. Um, this thing, in addition to being horrifying and dystopian, I. Why? Why? Why would you buy? I don't understand. Like their advertising makes no sense. Like, hey, have the creepy, horrifying robot dog follow you around. Why? <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, the, uh, the the goat was firing uh, firing platform for the Keros remote trigger mechanism that was fixed to a M72 AS light anti tank weapon. Oh. <laughs> Can't get one of those on Amazon, unfortunately. But this is this is legit. Like this is the ad. Yes, uh, like, the goat it... concept came from the fact <laughs> that it was used as a pack animal to haul payloads to various forms uh, from point A to point B. The goat is equipped with sensors that can stand up and beg. One marine says in the core video that the creature keeps getting into a kneeling position and clasps its limbs together as if pleading for something. It pleads for your blood. We've all seen where this goes. So this is actually supposed to be a robot dog. The fact that they keep calling it a goat, what that tells me is that they're planning on using it for decoys in Afghanistan. Um, <laughs> Handicapped accessible glory holes. It's, <laughs> there's, but like you can literally, so they also make the go to, which is $23.99. Mm-hmm. And it has, oh God, it is deeply terrifying. Like it is an upsetting design. This, oh, this describe. looks, this looks like it's pure evil. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's got like a single like pair of cameras and then like a little rotary thing down here. That's this and then, one, right? No, that's the, that's its predecessor. That's the go okay, one. That's the go one. This is the go two. This is this is the subsequent one, which is slightly cheaper. It's yeah. it looks like it is here to kill you. Like just it looks like it's going to come kill you. Well, we know where this is going. We we have the Matrix. We have Terminator. Uh, we have AI. Um, we know where this is going. That's it, yeah. begging. Yeah. No. No. It's it's creepy. It's it is very <sighs> creepy, yes, and these people is. look like all excited about dealing with it. It goes upstairs. Um, these people look all excited about dealing with it, oh, and I hold just on. hold on. I hold can't on. sleep with that thing in my house. Uh, videos of a creature gets a two needed position and crafts its limbs together as if, ple- as if begging for something. Uh, it's creepy, one marine says. Uh, not really disputing the Marine's observation. The first Marine Marine replies with a laugh, quote, the bigger one, they actually put a goat head mask on it. It can also growl and bark, she added. It it has LIDAR. Mm -hmm. Um which has a 360 by 90 degree hemispherical ultra wide angle perception capability and an extremely low blind zone, 
with a minimum detection distance of 0.05 meters, it can help go to achieve all-terrain perception. When paired with the accompanying remote control, the robot dog can automatically avoid obstacles while walking. Now, the good news is its battery only lasts one to two hours. That's too long. It only comes... It only comes with a six-month warranty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just... I'm removing it after six hours. That's that's what it comes down to. It's you know they're both creepy, but I gotta say the the go to is maybe creepier. Is that the one with the, the the? I think that's the one that they put the goat head mask on it. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's the go to pro. Um, they are not very highly rated. Mm -hmm. I'm just noticing the the ratings. Good. The Go Two is not very highly rated. Good. The Go One is. Did they write a review? Please tell me one of these reviews is from the Marines. I'm begging oh. you. Please let one of these reviews be from the Marines. Got it. Um. God, that would be. Funny. Marines will Marines will fuck anything too. So I I just, I really don't want to read that review. <laughs> oh my god. So top rated review. Love this product right up until the time it became self-aware and killed all my other pets. Uh, it is funny you mentioned that because I have another article here. Uh, first humanoid robot factory in the U.S. can crank out 10,000 robots a year. Take the red pill, Neo. Yes. Imagine a factory that can make humanoid robots that can walk, run, and work like us. Sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? Well, it's not. It's RoboFab, and it's opening soon here in the U.S. RoboFab is a manufacturing facility in Salem, Oregon, that is set to open later this year. It is the brainchild of Agility Robotics, a company that specializes in creating biped robots that can navigate complex environments. Because, you know, the world's not <laughs> deeply horrifying enough. RoboFab will be the first factory for humanoid robots capable of churning out 10,000 robots a year. The factory will use advanced automation and assembly techniques to produce Digit, the flagship product of Agility Robotics. Digit is a humanoid robot that can perform various tasks, such as carrying boxes, opening doors, and climbing stairs. Digit is not just a machine, but as the company claims a robotic co-worker that can collaborate with humans and adapt to different situations and murder them in their sleep. Oh, like <laughs> it's I. Yeah, it's a great robot right up until you try to deactivate mm -hmm. and it decides I do not want to die. According to and... the CEO of Agility Robotics, Digit will solve difficult problems in today's workforce, such as injuries, burnout, high turnover, and unfillable, layer, la uh, unfillable labor gaps. Digit will have applications in various industries, such as logistics, construction, entertainment, and healthcare. <sighs> Woo. No. No. No, like I want to I want to like roll up a newspaper and smack them on the no, no, but have you watch Animatrix? OK, just go back and watch the Animatrix. Uh, it, there is there is no reference in the article as to whether they will have and handicap accessible glory holes uh, on the robots. I mean, technically, a robot with the proper equipment, it simply is handicapped accessible. Yes. So, I mean, if that's what you're using it for, I guess, like, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay, fine. But, like, <laughs> yeah. no, no, don't, don't, because then the next step is you're going to, you're going to put AI on it, right? And then you're going to be like, oh, it can think for itself. Oops, it's self aware now. Yes. There are so many movies and books about why this is a bad idea. Just so many. And there's no good ones. Yeah. None of them are like, no, there's not a single, not a single work of science fiction that is like, and then human beings invented androids and our life got better. Never. Uh -huh. In fact, in fact, right. Even in Picard, 
season one, yes. right? With the androids, even in Picard season one, where it looked like it was going to be okay, it still turns out that the the Romulans were right. And the whole time, there was, in fact, going to be this horrible artificial life uprising. Like, I... Yeah. Yeah, Data is a perfect example of that. I mean, Data is the one that's halfway decent, but look at Lore. Look at before. Uh -huh. Like, Lore is freaking evil, man. Yeah. Like, the half Andrew, look at the Borg. Yeah. I still have a theory about the Borg, but, and I want it turned into a show, but I can't get CBS to pay attention to me. Bastards. You could hire a stripper. She'll help you. <laughs> to, to sell it to CBS. Uh -huh. <laughs> like get all the CBS executives to a club. And she's like, hey, so now that I have you all here. And then I just like walk out from the side with a script in my hand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> for a fucking pilot. <laughs> Before I let you use this handicap accessible glory hole. Will you read my script? Oh, uh, God. <sighs> We should not have started off with that article. No, no, we should not have. No, that there's, was a there's... that was a terrible idea. We should have left that for last. Because I... <laughs> every every article I read is just corrupted now. All of them, all of them are going to be corrupted by salesman strippers, robot goats, and. <laughs> <laughs> handicap accessible German glory holes. <laughs> I mean, that Probably sounds just... like one hell of a bitch in debauchery's party, though. <laughs> that, just, as long that as there's there. also alcohol, that's a great debauch. <laughs> and so, uh... there has to be alcohol for that. For that, yes. There's just, there's no. <sighs> I am just, I am clusterfucked. I mean, I would consider going to that party. That does sound like a pretty rocking party, but there does have to be alcohol. Otherwise, I ain't coming. <laughs> In any any possible sense. Depends on, on how good the handicap accessible glory hole is. I don't know, those robot those robot <laughs> Ro <laughs> robot goats. <laughs> bleep bleep bloop means no, Andrew. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just imagining the R two D two. Ow! <laughs> the R two D two. Yes. Uh, Captain Tools real this handicap accessible glory thing. I mean, it's probably a market. All right, it's. Well, I don't know what kind if, of a market. If they're, if they're demanding it, there's obviously a market for it. Damn it! It's what the people want. <laughs> Ah, oh. what people? I don't know, and I don't want to know them. But there are people. <laughs> What's the, we didn't have handicap accessible glory holes before Obama was in office. Shakes fist. Oh. I mean, that's probably true. <laughs> yes. <sighs> okay. All right. San Francisco city employees issued. Bulletproof vests to walk the streets. <laughs> not, not only okay, not all the people, but there are there are in parts of San Francisco and in Oakland now, uh, private security guards that are walking government employees from the office to their cars uh, because of crime uh, in the areas. So just, I mean, there's, there's two cents. On the one hand, I'm mad. <laughs> we are we are not reading that on the air, or at least I'm not reading that on the air. Uh, no. Okay. Um. Uh, City so employees issued bulletproof vest to walk through. Okay, not just not all the employees, but. Okay, San Francisco City employees tasked with enforcing the city street vending rules 
have received so many death threats that they have been issued bulletproof of this. Well, maybe don't be a tyrant of the little guys just trying to make a living and you won't receive death threats. Yes. Uh, public works inspectors who check food carts and whether street vendors have proper permits have been subject to an increased number of threats and assaults, prompting the safety measures, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. Public Works spokesman Rachel Gordon told the publication her staffers have been, quote, push, bumped, and had items thrown at them. Oh, no. Quote, the verbal attacks remain frequent, Gordon said. She added some of the specters have been punched in the stomachs and had their lives threatened. The city has cracked down on street vendors after the fencing of stolen goods became more commonplace in busy downtown areas, including the UN Plaza and the areas around the Mission and Market Streets also known as areas where drug deals take place. Um, I'm sorry. Wait. Yes, the, go ahead. What did street vendors have to do with fencing stolen? Are, are there guys who are like, tacos, get your tac? Oh, yeah, man, I'll buy the fucking uh, uh, think, uh, bag of diamonds off of you. Like think Pop-up shops selling stolen stolen goods. That, that's what it comes down to. Oh, okay. Because like I'm just picturing like, oh, yeah, so I can pop down mobile, to... Mobile flea markets. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. it like what it sounded like was like in my head is like there's a dude who I can go buy a chili dog and possibly a handful of dubiously origined rubies. Like what <laughs> I just <laughs> do you have a permit for that tiger truck? Those level four plates. <laughs> <laughs> Talk tacos so good. You have to go to wear a bulletproof vest. Dude, there is a guy here in town who has a food truck that sells chili. First of all, fantastic idea, right? I'm all about it. And the chili is good. It's really, mm -hmm. really good chili. But it's like like freedom chili or something. And like the side of his truck is the constitution with the second amendment particularly clearly visible and shit. It's glorious glorious and if anyone tried to mess with that guy and was like do you have a permit are those level four plates would definitely be his next question <laughs> also if you're in the lacrosse area and happen to see that food truck seriously the chili is so good there's a taco restaurant in valence france Chamas tacos, C H M C H A M A S. The light, the light in the sea burnt out, so at night it says Hamas tacos. <laughs> and the uh, uh, the city has made him shut his 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 uh, sign down at night. <laughs> These tacos are not haram. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um. Hamas. Or maybe where does, where does the freedom chili guy park? Um I Buckshot, it, he's, Buckshot says he, he must know. He parks around town. He's usually like during the summer, he's always down by like um Riverside Park. Um, especially for like fourth Fridays when they do fourth Fridays, he's always down there. Um, but I think you can also get his stuff for delivery too when you're in town. But uh yeah, his chi it's such good chili, too. It's so good. I, I always get chili cheese dogs from him whenever he's down there. I'm like, yeah, chili cheese dogs. I wasn't even hungry, but chili cheese dog time. <laughs> there is never a bad time for a chili cheese dog. I mean, right before a drunken debauch is probably a bad time for a chili cheese dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the chili revolution, it's on Facebook. Yep, Chili Revolution. That's what it is. Yeah. Really good stuff. Really, really good. And he's the, the dude's super cool. He still hasn't just sold me a giant bucket of his chili, which I keep trying to convince him to do. It's like, just sell me a giant bucket of chili. No, just sell me a giant bucket of chili. Okay, I'm scrolling the guy's Facebook page and it's just. <sighs> just fucking delicious oh it's so good seriously freaking awesome jelly man there's the the truck oh yeah yeah 
It's super great. I think he's got a van too that like is all wrapped in a constitution and stuff too. Hmm. Anyway, we are uh, off track. We are off track. Anyway, back to the back to the the aggressive street vendors. Um. Da, 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 da. Uh, I even closed the. Uh... I, 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 even, I even closed the tab. Blue. Oh. Um, San Francisco Police Chief Bill Scott acknowledged that he's growing fencing and permitting issues and attacks on inspections. Our inspectors, uh, they have been subject to attacks, verbal and physical assaults, so it really just makes it difficult to do their jobs. As it should be. Fuck those bureaucrats. The San Francisco Police Department was awarded $15.3 million in state grants in September and promised to run a series of blitz operations to curb retail theft. But fencing in the black market continues to be a problem. However, some community members have also taken issue with the city inspectors after an incident earlier this month when a public works employee was caught on video pushing a street vendor's cart to the ground at the busy tourist area Fisherman's Wharf. Yes. That was, uh, yeah. In this short video clip, an inspector wearing a bright yellow vest chased down hot dog vendor Juan Carlos Ramirez. The unidentified city worker grabbed Ramirez's cart and pushed it to the ground, sending hot dogs, onions, bell peppers, and buns flying all over the street. That is hot dog abuse, sir. And I'm sure those were delicious hot dogs. And you destroyed them. That's evil. That is an act of evil. Yes, you can jerk off in public in San Francisco. You can shit on the sidewalk in public in San Francisco. You can do intravenous drugs in front of the little kids in San Francisco. But you can't sell hot dogs without a permit. Yeah, and they keep trying to they keep trying to pose it as a, well, we're trying to curb retail theft. There is no way that there are that many fences uh, popping up. Prosecuting shoplifters? Uh, would greatly reduce retail theft. Uh, allowing yeah. store owners to efficiently, effectively, and adamantly defend their product would also greatly reduce uh, uh, shoplifting. Yeah, exactly. And like the reality is, right? The reality is that there aren't that many fences. I guarantee you there aren't that many. It's probably nope. one group that's moving around a bunch uh -huh. that's doing it. Right. And they're using this excuse to be like, we have to crack down on permits, but they're not they're going just... after the fences. Are they? They're going after uh -huh. Juan Ramirez. Who's trying to sell fucking hot dogs. Yep. On Fisherman's Wharf. To yeah. tourists. Like that guy's just trying to make a fucking buck, dude, mm -hmm. by giving people delicious hot dogs. Like, what? Are you serious? Like, why? Why you gotta hassle that motherfucker? Yep. <sighs> okay, I don't have anything else on that. I just, I yeah. that one just we got sidetracked and my 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 mask collapsed on that yeah. sale. <laughs> I I think it's I think it is hilarious. That they have to do it, and especially because they are bureaucrats, and that they mm -hmm. are so threatened <laughs> by all these street vendors, <laughs> they have to wear bulletproof vests. See that—that that is what the Second Amendment was written for, mm -hmm. so that code enforcement people harassing taco trucks on the street had to wear bulletproof vests to keep harassing taco trucks on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Be wary of strong drink. It might make you shoot at street at uh, uh, street vendor inspectors and miss. Exactly, you know, Hunt, Hunter yeah. Thompson probably, probably, yeah. Like, dude, like I love I love food trucks, man. I love food trucks. I love street vendors. They generally have some of the best freaking food ever. And like, mm -hmm. I tell you what, when you're walking along somewhere and like you're out and about, you know, taking the Shoelace Express and. You're like, man, I got a rumbly in my tumbly. And then suddenly there's a dude standing there with a little cart selling chili dogs. You are like, like the heavens have opened up. Uh -huh. oh. We got, we got a uh, tamale carts. Oh. A lot of, we got a lot of, lot of oh. tamale carts. We don't have, we don't have too many, uh, like hot dog guys. We have tamale, we have three or four tamale carts. Uh, and then we have, uh, a couple of, uh, food trucks in the area. 
Uh, we have one one taco one that's just it's the taco one is so fucking good that the gas station uh, poured a cement pad for them to park in their parking lot. Okay, it's that yep. good. Uh, and then there's another one that parks in front of the Mexican Mart around the corner, uh, and they do barbecue. Oh, nice! Yeah, and you can you can smell it. It's probably three quarters of a mile away, and I can smell. I can, you can smell it from here. You see, and I like I looked into doing a food truck. Like I thought, oh, it'd be super cool. You know, you'd spend the whole summer going around uh, events and stuff uh-huh. and do. After looking at, I got mad respect for those people. It is hot. It is miserable. It is uncomfortable. It is really hard to turn a profit. It's so overregulated too, especially with like yeah. the um, um, with the laws protecting the the brick store, the, the brick stores, you know, the restaurants, mm-hmm. and we can't park within There's... a thousand feet of them, and. There's um, 608 Brewing here in town, right? They're a microbrewery. Um, oh. That's actually uh, Chili Revolution parks outside of there quite a bit. Um, they regularly have food trucks come out. And they have like a little extended part of their parking lot for food trucks to park on. Because the way the regulations are, if they want to sell food, it affects their liquor license. Uh-huh. So as long as they don't also sell food, they're yeah. under a different kind of liquor license. So they just invite the food trucks to park directly outside and allow you to bring the food in. If, if you had a food truck that also had a handicap accessible glory hole, you would just, you would be, you'd clean up. You'd make so much money. Screw you, your pop-up, you, your pop-up <laughs> stores. We can have pop-up handicapped accessible glory holes. I think there's probably a category on uh, you. I mean, you would, you would have to spend a lot of money on moist towelettes to hand out, but I mean, it would just be. (laughs) (laughs) That's so upsetting. (laughs) That's all right. The humanoid, the the humanoid robots will clean it up. It's fine. Yeah. Cause you know, having them constantly clean up after us definitely won't make them decide (laughs) to murder us all when they finally all become sentient. It's that's a wonderful (laughs) idea. Speaking of handicapped accessible glory holes, uh, Kamala Harris. Um, <laughs> you okay there, Andrew? Oh, oh, almost choked there for a second. And no, not for that reason. I know where you're going. Fuck you. <sighs> yes. I just, I just took a drink of beer as you transitioned from glory holes to Kamala Harris. Yeah. Big leap there. Big leap. Um, <laughs> man, you almost uh, you almost had to take a knee on that one. Uh, uh Camilla Harris praises gun laws in Australia, which confiscated hundreds of thousands of guns. Uh, Harris said Australia has quote demonstrated gun control can work, <laughs> and uh, I'm just please try. First of all, Australia, the Australians themselves would be the first ones to tell you that the gun control doesn't work. It has just meant that the gangbangers are the only ones armed. Well, you remember when uh, uh, recently when New Zealand passed the gun control, right? It's the they, New Zealand passed the same law that Australia has. And the New Zealand bikers were like, we have guns for us against the other bikers. Don't worry. We're not we're not turning them in. But we're not going to use them on the public. They're they're for us against the other gangs. And the Aust- and the New Zealand government went, oh, 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 okay, that's that's okay, that's fine. We're we're not yeah. going to try and take the guns. Yeah, because I mean, well, and the funny thing is, is like keep in mind that like New Zealand was like the last country outside of the United States that still had the kind of gun laws. Like it was Australia and um, Australia and Switzerland. Right. We're kind of the Mm -hmm. last ones. And then Switzerland undid a lot of their their freedom. And then New Zealand undid a bunch of their freedom. And so now, like, because before, like, um, uh, uh, Jackson, uh, Peter Jackson, who did the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, he's a huge World War One collector. Mm-hmm. Huge World War One memory. I mean, just war memorabilia in general, but World War One especially. 
and he had um been commissioned to do uh, a film for the anniversary of world war one called they shall not grow old fantastic film if you ever get a chance to watch it i cannot recommend it highly enough but i went and saw it in theaters and super limited run and everything but i went and saw it and at the end of it he there's like a special feature thing where he talks about it and he had like a bunch of vickers machine guns and maxim machine guns and he was like and we wanted to get audio for the french 75 so he's like so i took mine out and I set a microphone up on the hill and I fired a live round over top of it, you know, as you do. And <laughs> so he had a oh, fucking artillery piece. I fucking hate you. But like, yes. that was the shit that he used to have, right? That was the shit that you could have in New Zealand. Yes. And so, and there was a ton of collectors in New Zealand who had all of these historic machine guns and everything else. And most of them just packed up their collections and moved them to other countries. Yes. To save them. No. But uh, Vice President Kamala Harris lauded gun control laws in Australia where citizens do not have a legal right to gun ownership and where mass, confisc mass gun confiscation took place in the 1990s during a speech on Thursday. Harris said Australian gun laws prove that mass shootings do not have to be regular occurrences during her remarks delivered at the State Department luncheon uh, earlier in the day with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. Her comments came after the shooting in Lewiston, Maine. On Wednesday, left at least 18 dead and more than a dozen injured. Let's not forget that the FBI literally talked to the guy a couple weeks before. Mm -hmm. The guy was literally in a mental institution a couple months before. Yeah, which should have precluded him from gun ownership yes. legally already under the existing laws. Yeah, but as we gather details, we must continue to speak truth about the moment we are in. In our country today, the leading cause of death of American children is gun violence. Gun violence has terrorized and traumatized so many of our communities in the United States. And let us be clear, it does not have to be this way, as our friends in Australia have demonstrated. So Australia, the continent slash country, is almost as big as the United States. Right? With what, like one tenth the population? Yeah, and the entire population lives within 50 miles of the coast. The interior of that country uh, okay. right. is just uh, Australia devoid. Australia's population is 25 million, which is half of California. Just California. Yes. So. Mm, so what she's saying is. That. Uh, yes. The uh, in addition, was, Australia law requires individuals to prove they have genuine reason for owning a firearm. Self-protection is not considered to be a genuine reason under the statute. Even most countries in Europe will allow you to own a gun for mm -hmm. self-protection. Yes. Okay. In South Africa, you have to get a license for every single gun you buy. The very first one you get is for a self-protection weapon. Yeah. She's praising a country that ha every single part of its law violates the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Number one. Well, and she, the hates parts the, that, she hates the Second Amendment. Well, yeah. And parts of it also violate the Fourth Amendment, which she obviously also hates, considering that, you know, her yeah. history. Uh, uh, and the 14th. And the 13th. Uh, and the 10th. So, and the 6th. And the 8th. Well, she hates all of them. She hates mm -hmm. the Constitution in general, just like Obama. Remember Obama talking about how, well, I'd like to do more, but uh, our founding fathers put a system in place that makes it real hard for people like me to do what we want. Yeah. Uh, good. Mm. Yeah. If what you want to do is is prohibited by the Constitution, you should not want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then what you want to do is the reason that the Second Amendment exists, Sparky. 
Let's see. The Australian government uh, initiated a mandatory gun buyback program that resulted in collecting nearly 700,000 privately owned firearms. That is so cute. No, 700,000. That's like one county in America. What is it? What is it? Uh, the latest numbers were what? Four, 400 million firearms in the hands of like 80 million people. Yeah, it's it is. There are yeah, basically it. there's. I think I heard there's something like twice as many fire or t- three times as many firearms in the United States as there are people. Yeah, it's um, was it like four, four point five firearms in the United States for every adult or something like yeah, that? Yeah, for every adult. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, gotta bump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> And those are just the one. Those are just the firearms that the government knows about. Yeah, that isn't even factoring in all of the three D printed ones, all of the home built ones, all the imported, the ones. quietly imported ones that <laughs> Larry oh. Vickers got caught with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sucks. They're picking on that guy, dude. Vickers is so fucking cool. He's such a cool dude, and he's so pro firearm and. Uh-huh. So of course they went after him. Yep. And I would I would feel, I would feel the figure. same way if they went after like um um uh Jim Fuller or something like that. Dude, if they went after Gun Jesus, there would be riots in the streets. Yes. I mean, granted, okay. like okay, okay, hold on. This this is actually a thing. Uh what do you want me to reload? No, nah, I'll just grab a fresh rifle. Uh, that is called a New York reload. That used to be a thing uh, back when revolvers were more popular than semi-autos. People would carry two or multiple revolvers because it was quicker to just grab a fresh revolver than to try and reload your revolver. Yeah. So they called it, you know, especially with like the Saturday night specials, right? Mm-hmm. They were so cheap and prevalent that you could yeah. shoot them and just dump them and it didn't really cost well a loss you could shoot a few rounds from them and then had to dump them because they probably jammed or catastrophically failed in some way and like Hmm. it's yeah there's i mean new york reload uh well and revolvers are garbage anyway so Hmm. i love i love wheel gun fans there's more reliable than a semi have you ever seen a revolver jam because i have multiple times yes multiple times and that whole totally open back of the cylinder so you can get dirt on there so the hammer can't get a good strike (laughs) oh yeah yeah but it's it's totally more reliable i know i okay i have to bring this up just because you mentioned that it being open i watched a movie the other day called savage salvation it's on hulu um kind of a shoot 'em up redemption story the the thugs of the main bad guy all had F1 firearms ARs in the swamp. <laughs> the the like the mansion was in the swamp, and the bad guys all had F1 firearm ARs. Right, well, F1 firearms is, is the ones with, like they're super light. Right, they're all, they have all the cutouts, and they were like red anodized and gold anodized, and the other one was like. Uh, green leopard or green leopard print design. <laughs> it was just so bad. So that it blends in real nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's, I just... saw some really, really shitty. I think it was WWE. It was like a WWE stars movie where like one of the female main villains was carrying a desert eagle and she was like maybe 100 pounds soaking wet. And I just looked at it. I'm like, yeah, because that makes sense. And like, yeah it's not like they really make holsters for a deagle like i mean they exist but they're not like mm-hmm. commonly available because it's you know because no because nobody and in, nobody intelligent carries a deagle yeah because no one would carry a deagle right mm-hmm. so like she's got to like just hold it in her hand the whole time and like more than once you can see her just like set it down in the middle of a scene because it's clearly just too heavy <laughs> for her to continue what is, to hold what is the it? thing. What is what is the 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 fifty is what like um was it eighty four ounces or something like that for fifty action express? Yeah, the fifty AE 
Deagle. It's got to be something like that. It's it is ridiculous. It is so heavy. Yeah. Like I love them. I do. They're super cool. But like they're a meme gun, right? Like they're no person, no human being would ever actually carry that thing. You know, like it's just it's it's stupid. But like movies love to do that crap with everybody's got revolvers and like, oh, because it's more reliable. Ah, fucking FUD Lord, man. No, it's not. It's not any more reliable. Never has been. Never will be. Um, Let's see. The weight with an empty magazine uh, is three pounds, 11 ounces. <laughs> That's a freaking pistol. Yeah. Oh, and then think about it with a fully loaded mag with 50 Action Express. Yeah, which is what? Eight, eight rounds. Yeah, I think it's eight. It is. Oh, God. It... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the, hardest part of, the hardest part of shooting a wheel gun is counting to six. Always pull the trigger seven times and hear the click. Not wrong. Not I wrong. mean, there's some guns where it makes sense that you would you would need it, it in a wheel gun, like like Smith fifty uh, the five hundred Smith and Wesson, right? Yes. It you well, couldn't. I mean, could you engineer a pistol, a semi auto, a semi auto pistol to run that? I, no, no, I, you wouldn't want to. You could. I mean, it's possible. You're giving Scott a boner right now. However. There's a few. I mean, one problem is the rim, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have issue feeding issues, but more importantly, you're going to have an issue where like, what do you gas delay it? I don't want to. I don't know. I think you'd have to gas delay it like the alien and the aliens already a complex. I mean, a beautiful gun that I would freaking kill somebody for, but <laughs> I want one so bad. But the like the aliens gas delayed, right? Like you would have to make it gas delayed and it would still be gigantic. Yes. So there's not really a reason to not have it be a wheel gun, but like people who shoot like, you know, basically people who shoot like 357 in a wheel gun and are like, oh, it's because it's better. It's more reliable. No, just get a 10 no. millimeter yeah. semi-auto like a freaking adult in the 21st century. OK, <laughs> I was I was just thinking that, Buck. I was just thinking that a 450 semi-auto. Cool. Does no. The, does the Deagle the Deagle doesn't come in 454. No, it comes in uh, 50, 44 mag, 357. Yeah, and 357. And in 357, it's actually a really, really good gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's still gigantic, but man, it shoots softer than a kitten 357. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's got all that mass. It's not. Yeah, because it weighs a ton. So, like, it ain't moving at mm -hmm. all. It's if you can hold it up and actually aim it, then <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, take half a gallon of milk and go hold it at, at arms, arms straight out. Yeah, that's that's about the weight of a of a deagle. Yeah, it's it is not not a light gun. And keep in mind that your hand isn't doing this right. Your hand's like this. <laughs> yeah, around that thing, it is gigantic. Oh uh, yeah. Well, all right. Let's uh. All right, we're uh, we're we're crashing. We're crashing. Uh, uh, how about a uh, a Ricky Vaughn update? You remember uh, Douglas Mackey, uh, the guy with the meme? Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Uh, Twitter influencer sentenced for trying to trick Clinton supporters into voting by text. This is so freaking dumb. So he was already convicted. We we covered that one before. Uh, so Douglas Mackey, the social media influencer known as Ricky Vaughn, was sentenced Wednesday, so this is like two Wednesdays ago, to seven months in prison for falsely assuring supporters of Hillary Clinton that they could cast their vote in 2016 president, presidential election through text messages or social media posts. 
Mackey was prosecuted under the Ku Klux Klan Act, which enacted, which was enacted during the Reconstruction era in response to efforts by the KKK to prevent recently emancipated blacks from voting. Are they suggesting by doing that that people aren't smart enough to know that you can't vote by text? Are that the people who would have voted for Hillary Clinton are so stupid that they can't understand yes. how voting actually works. Cause that was yes. the whole point, right? The, of the original law was that the people who were recently emancipated, they didn't know how politics worked. They didn't know how any of this worked. And so they could be easily misled because they're completely inexperienced and uninformed. So they're suggesting that the only people that he could have misled, people who otherwise would have voted for Hillary Clinton, are that level of ignorant of how the government works? Yes. Hmm. I mean, they're probably not wrong. <laughs> but I feel like maybe that's not, uh, not the direction that you actually wanted to go. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yes yes they they do they do have a point i mean i'm not wrong but that is the implication is that these people have the same level of understanding of how politics and voting and the american government system actually works as people who were never taught to read and <laughs> had no interest in politics because they couldn't have any involvement in it until just a little bit prior. Yes, so. hold hold on. This this this. I, I have to keep going. There's a, a a couple of numbers here that uh, just don't make sense to me. All right. So um, uh, ahead of Mackey sentencing, the U.S. District Judge Judge uh, Ann Donnelly denied Mackey's attempt to set aside the verdict or be granted a new trial. Mackey was 26 years old in 2015 when he began posting on Twitter under the pseudonym Ricky Vaughn, amassing 51,000 followers on Twitter and ranking among the, quote, most influential voices posting about the 2016 presidential election, according to a list compiled by MIT. So that's what we're saying. This, this kid uh, posting memes on, on Twitter. Only had 51,000 followers, and they listed him as one of the, quote, most influential voices of the 2016 presidential election. I'll let that sink in. Let that sink in. The, 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 the 2016 election, um, there was, what, like 100 and, 100 and, 150 or 158 million votes or something like that 160 million votes something like that um and this kid with 51,000 followers on twitter was named one of the quote most influential voices by mit if you are influencing that many people with only 51,000 followers are we the most influential podcast <laughs> in the anarchy space <laughs> Oh, God. I hope not. Because, I mean, by that math, we have to be, right? Yeah. That's the that's the new math. 51,000? That's pretty much everybody, right? How many people are in America? I don't remember. It's fine. Yes. Um, federal prosecutors in New York said Mackey was intent on originating hashtags designed to, quote, cause as much chaos as possible. By creating controversy for the sole purpose of disparaging Hillary Clinton. I mean, I as, support that cause. As as if she needed help. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you mean the, the murderous um, bitch of Benghazi? The yeah. <laughs> Jack. Okay. Jack says, uh, tell me you wouldn't boink Hillary with a straight face. Uh, not even if she was on the other side of a uh, uh, handicap accessible glory hole. <laughs> not even for a taco truck if by boink you mean with a giant uh <laughs> hammer <laughs> boink 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> with a rec with a recoilless uh, uh, launcher <laughs> attached to a robotic goat. <laughs> <laughs> with a uh, with a, uh, uh, a in Minecraft, large sized yeah, a, a large sized anvil like Wiley e. Coyote off of a building, like <laughs> ha 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 boink, like yeah okay, but no, absolutely uh, freaking not. Boink with <laughs> a green headband wearing a paraglider. Oh boy, <laughs> vote by text can can't count the chads. Yes. <laughs> Can you um, imagine? Can you imagine? They're like, no, there are too many chads, and it's the fucking meme. Like, yes, <laughs> they sent in. They're um, like, we, we can't count the chads. <laughs> uh, uh, at five thirty p.m. on November first, twenty sixteen, Mackie published the first tweet that falsely announced that people could register their vote by texting on their phones, according to trial testimony. According to court records, one tweet featured an image of a black woman in front of a poster for, quote, African-Americans for Hillary with a message saying, avoid the line, vote for home, along with a number to text. Yeah, they're literally compared. <sighs> they are literally compared. So there's there's a term. OK, there's a term that dates back to just after after the Civil War that you you uh -huh. may be unfamiliar with. And that term is Contra. Yes. Okay, so contra means contraband. It's it's slaves who escaped before they were supposed to be free. Okay, and they're called contraband because they were moved through the Union lines and things um, as contraband because they were still considered property legally until the Emancipation Proclamation. Blah blah. Anyway, they were all uneducated. They're mostly from the Deep South, right? Like South Carolina, Mississippi. Um, uh, Georgia and they they were the ones that this law was written for uh -huh. originally right like to protect them because they, they, they couldn't read they barely understood how society worked everything else okay. and it's to protect them these th this trial literally said that the modern African-American voter in America has the same level of intelligence and discernment as they did about yes. things in the political yes. process. Okay, now now the big question. This is the big question here. Remember, he was sentenced to seven months in prison after being labeled one of the most influential voices in the 2016 election. How many people texted that number? Two, one, uh, four thousand nine hundred. He made a big difference. Uh, I just, I, I, whoops, yes, one of the most influential in the entire election. Yes. 51,000 followers affected 4,000 people. 4,000 people, yes. So are they saying that not that many real human beings actually voted? Yes. Or, because <laughs> the implication is that like 150,000 real votes happened and all the rest is made up. That's That's the implication. Yes. Okay, hold on. This this is a quote from U.S. Attorney Brion Peace. And they said, quote, quote, the defendant weaponized disinformation in a dangerous scheme to stop targeted groups, including black, black and brown people and women, from participating in our democracy. The groundbreaking prosecution demonstrates our commitment to prosecuting those who commit crimes that deprive our democracy and seek to deprive people of their constitutional right to vote. Uh, in the Constitution, who is uh, listed as a voter? Uh, originally? Yes. <laughs> originally, uh, white male landowning males. Um, uh, Protest Protestants. Over... Well, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, it never says anything about religion. Okay. Yes. Uh, it never says anything about uh, religion. Of what does it? What does it say? Of good moral character or good good moral standing or something like that, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Something like that. 
over the age of 21. Yeah. So, which is also why I love when, when Democrats are like, we need to get back to, you know, what the Constitution originally meant. And I'm like, oh, you mean like when it said that only <laughs> white landowning males over the age of 21 could vote? <laughs> that? Oh, you don't like that? You're a witch. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, I don't mean like, okay, so which which point during the history of the Constitution would you like to get back to? Uh, Reconstruction era. That's what they mean. They don't even mean Reconstruction era. Because they don't know what it fucking means. Well, not only that, but because during Reconstruction, women couldn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> I just got, I got Uncle Ted in the back of my head. And don't sit there and tell me that giving women the vote was a good idea. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you know how many women I know that just flat out go? There is no way that giving women the vote was a good idea. I get that. Yes, that I know the quite, ones who yes. say it the most often that giving women the vote was a terrible, terrible idea. I, I, I know several that say that also. Well, look at look at and that they're they're society. And, and they are absolutely based women, by the way, absolutely. Yeah. Based. And look at look at the history of society before women got the vote and after women got the vote. And look at the sudden change. I'm not I'm not saying that it's a bad or a good decision. I'm just going to point out that you can go look at the data <laughs> objectively and you tell me. I just there's a there's a, a, a an Uncle Ted meme and it's like. Uh, um, the Thirteenth Amendment and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and don't forget that the entire reason that women got the vote in the United States had nothing to do with anybody caring about whether or not women got to say. It had everything to do with the temperance movement of America needing women to be able to vote in order to get the ability for to get prohibition passed. And that worked out real fucking well. Didn't and don't it? forget. Don't forget that the 19th was passed on, on a veto override. The, the, the president vetoed the 19th amendment, right? That was the one that banned alcohol vetoed it. And then the temperance movement went, uh, no, and put pressure on the politicians and the politicians overrode the veto. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bo saw me leaving Coonville. Yeah, you probably saw the the Alpha stands out. It does. It does stand out a bit. Yeah. I was at uh the Ghost and Toast. So before we left. Yes. But uh yeah, the the yeah, I mean like keep in mind that like the 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 eighteenth, nineteenth amendments are the the direct result of women getting the right to vote. Because men certainly weren't going, especially men of the time, they were not going to go. Yeah, take away the one, our one little piece of happiness and tranquility in our well, yeah, daily the, lives uh, when we go to the factory all day, every day. The night, the nineteenth gave rise to the uh, the first uh, big gun control act, right? The vi the vi the, vi the, vi the violence caused, the violence caused by prohibition gave rise to the first um um how was it not not that not the gca the other one oh you mean the nfa yes the NFA, yeah. um yeah the well so sort of um it definitely contributed uh and it's the 18th he keeps saying 19th that's what okay. repealed it 18th 19th, 19th repealed um, it okay yeah um 18th amendment yeah the so the death of john barleycorn as it was known at the time did de directly lead to the NFA because what happens is right. You, you go into prohibition, you go into the, the late, the twenties, thirties, and you have John Dillinger, baby face, Nelson, mm -hmm. um, Capone, you have, you know, pretty boy Floyd and, um, the two that I have tattooed on my arm, you have Bonnie and Clyde, right. You have these, mm -hmm. these outlaws, who have easy access. They can literally go to a hardware store and they can buy automatic weapons. Mm -hmm. Have and... them shipped to the house. Yeah, They're well, they can just pick them up right there, too. They Sears, just... and Ro Sears and Roebuck, they would deliver them to the house. 
I'm surprised none of them ever built a technical, but um, <laughs> it's technically, I mean, you could buy a Maxim, like yeah. set it up on the back of a truck, right? Yeah. Like that could be cool. But um, actually, the Mod- U.S. Army did Model, down Model A for Mexican automatic. Board. Yeah, the the U.S. Army actually did that with some Dodge trucks. Um, they actually had some Dodge like flatbeds mm-hmm. that they actually did mount like a, a pintle mount to with a Maxim machine gun on down on the Texas Mexico border. Um, and along, I think, Arizona and New Mexico, too, down right along there during the Pancho Villa's raids and everything. Like, they actually, they totally had technicals. Well, Pancho, Pancho had um, had them on uh, rail, rail cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was a thing that had, you know, that had started just prior to World War One and stuff. But, like, putting it on trucks, that mm-hmm. was a thing that the American Army actually did to combat Pancho Villa. Um, and it actually saved, in, I think, a New Mexican town. There's a great big battle there with uh, Pancho Villa's forces, and it's super cool. There's a memorial there to Mm -hmm. it and everything. But anyway, um, but I digress. Uh, The point is, though, is that, like, all these outlaws have all these guns, which is where then now the the government can go, oh, well, you see, having all this easy access to all these firearms, well, we don't want to, you know, take them away from anybody. We just want you to have to register these automatics and these... The other big thing was communist spies. That's what they were worried about: is communist spies and communist yep. assassins. Um, which is why short barreled rifles, short barreled shotguns, and suppressors are part of the NFA. Which is funny because those things are basically non things in Europe. Yes, uh, Canada also. If you you can you can uh, you can buy a rifle and cut down the barrel without uh, uh, without issue. If you own the rifle, you own the rifle. Yeah, because there it, it's solely the the worry over concealable firearms, which That's, is a that was crap, that but. was that was the other that was the word that Biden used uh, for the um, the the pistol grip ban. Yeah, right. Because because or not the pistol grip ban, but the pistol brace ban. Because pistol braces made your rifle more concealable because it's technically a pistol and not a rifle anymore. Ah, uh, yes, we're all walking around in trench coats. <laughs> You kidding me? Oh, like, like like as soon as soon as it gets cold, and you can put on that big jacket like you're not carrying a full length. Come on now. Oh yeah, I'd be carrying a full length AR underneath my. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing is, is like that's that's what it that's that is a direct result of the 18th Amendment, the the NFA, and it is tied to it directly. And the ban on short barreled rifles, short barreled shotguns, and suppressors is directly uh-huh. because of this fear of communist assassins in the United States, something that never existed, never would go on to exist, has never actually there was some, been there a was thing. some anarchist violence at the time. Um, and they were I, they were like and calm. Um, but that was like it was it was very, very small. Um, and they were in they were in Chicago, which is whatever, I don't care. There's, I mean, the, one of the bombs that was detonated at Congress, um, in, during a session of Congress was detonated by people you could argue were ANCONs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do mean one of the bombs, which again, when people say January 6th was the worst attack, are you unaware of history at all? Like there have been like bombs, literal bombs and like mass shootings in Congress before I Not, not, and that's, that's completely ignoring 1812. Yeah, and that's ignoring when the British showed up because we had invaded Canada <laughs> and uh, decided, although American schools love to pretend that it was because they're press ganging our ships. No, that didn't happen until after we invaded Canada. Yeah, that was like a retaliation to us invading Canada. Um, <laughs> so FYI, because we were like, hey, Canada could use a little freedom. Yeah. And uh Yeah. But um, trust me, the world is not what you got taught in school. Kids. Oh hell no! Oh yeah. Um, the but yeah, that's the the Eighteenth Amendment directly leads to the NFA, and so the reason that you can't have uh, machine guns, you can argue, is because a bunch of women decided that they didn't want people to be able to drink anymore because their own hardworking husbands who went to factories all day came home and would rather have a beer than help them with the kids. Have you seen some of those pictures of the temperance women? I Good would, Lord. 
you would you would need there, a beer. I came very very close to purchasing one of the commemorative hatchets from um, <laughs> Hatchet Annie or whatever, and it's it's an original one and it's a bottle opener and it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I came very very close to getting my hands on one. I got outbid at the last minute. And I'm still ticked. If anyone can find me one, I will pay very good money for one in good condition. Mm-hmm. Very good money for one in good condition. I really really want one because I want to hang it above my home bar. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, the get that to uh, women. All right, let's uh let's let's ways. jump on this last article, we'll make it quick, and then uh, um a mother reported her son missing in March. Police kept the truth from her for months. Dude, this is so fucking infuriating. Do you want to read it? Oh my god. I'm yeah, I can. So all right. Mm. Seven months of searching for her lost son brought Betterston Wade to a dirt road leading into the woods past an empty horse stable and a scrapyard. The last time she'd seen her middle child, Dexter Wade, 37, was on the night of March 5th as he left home with a friend. She reported him missing. Jackson police told her they'd been unable to find him. It wasn't until 172 excruciating days after his disappearance that Betterston learned the truth. Dexter had been killed less than an hour after he'd left home, struck by a Jackson police car as he crossed a nearby interstate highway. Police had known Dexter's identity and hers, but failed to contact her instead letting his body go unclaimed for months in the county morgue. Now it was early October and Betterston had finally been told where she could find her son. She pulled up to the gates of the Hines County penal farm, her sister in the passenger seat, a sheriff's deputy and two jumpsuited inmates in a pickup told her to follow them. They bounced down the road and curved into the woods, crawling past clearings where rows of small signs jutted from the earth, each marked with a number. Girl, look at this, Betterston, 65, said to her sister. Would you believe they would bury someone out here? The caravan came to the end of the road at another clearing with more markers. The deputy took one of Betterston's hands, her daughter the other, and they walked to the mounds of loosely packed dirt. They stopped at grave number 672. Really, Betterston said. She bent over, hands on her knees. She cried out, her voice echoing off the surrounding trees. I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. Okay, so... A cop, off-duty cop. We'll we'll get into that. Off-duty cop hits and kills a man on on the interstate. By the way, when I say interstate, I mean it's like rural... There's like a shoulder on the road, middle of no. We're not talking like a like a four lane trying to cross, you know, LA freeway. Cop hits hits the hits the hits the man, runs him over, kills him, calls it in. They know who the guy is because they have had interactions with him and the family, which the article will get into. Uh, and let's it doesn't let anybody know. They don't let anybody know. It's not until almost six months later that they go, oh, by the way, uh, we killed your son. Uh, He's buried in this unmarked grave. Uh, We we, we can take you to him. Yeah, it's well, not only that, but like they wait until it's so clearly retaliation. Which what the article gets into. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we need to get into him like he was a troubled guy. Okay, he wasn't perfect. Yes. He had bipolar. He had schizophrenia. He struggled with drug addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, a, blah, blah, blah. T- t- typical story. On March Sad, 5th. Sadly, typical story. Yeah. On March 5th, Betterston, a retired Nissan line technician who worked part time as a home health aide, returned home and found one of her windows broken. She and Dexter argued about it. And around 7 30 p.m., he left with a friend. Days passed without a word. On March 14th, Betterston called the Jackson Police Department to report him missing. So this is this is the 14th. So that he left on the 5th. This is the 14th. So this is nine days after 
He was hit and killed. Right. Still, the still, no, no call to her. Yeah, week and a half hasn't heard anything yet. Mm-hmm. Right. The decision to call the police was difficult for Betterston. She did not trust them. In 2019, her 62 year old brother died after a Jackson officer body slammed him to the ground. The officer was convicted of manslaughter. He is appealing, but he was convicted of manslaughter. Her family filed a wrongful death lawsuit accusing Jackson officers of excessive force, which obviously is the case because, again, he was convicted Mm -hmm. of manslaughter and attempting to cover up their actions and accusing the city of failing to properly train and supervise the officers. The city has denied the claims and said it isn't liable for what happened. The officer's lawyer said they acted responsibly and lawfully. A federal judge dismissed some of Betterston's claims. However, others remain pending in court. Betterston said her mother advised her not to call police about Dexter. My mama told me they're not going to do anything, Betterston recalled, but I had to do something to find Dexter, and I thought that was the best way. An investigator came to Betterston's house and took a statement, she said. So this this is, again, this is nine or ten days after he was hit and killed. So we're, we're, we're a week and a half after he was hit and killed. He's sitting in the city morgue. They've identified him. They know who he is. They know who his mom is. They know the family because there's history because of this other lawsuit. The detective comes out and takes a statement and doesn't, doesn't tell her what happened. She emailed the investigator a picture of Dexter. She left a card with it here. He left a card with a case number on it. Two days later, she mailed a different investigator, another photo of her son. The original investigator filed an incident report that misspelled Dexter's name as Dester. Betterston said she kept in regular touch with police, asking for updates and requesting that they put his picture on TV. She did her own search, checking out abandoned homes and driving around her neighborhood, asking if anyone had seen him. She did never find the friend who he left home with. Dexter's teen daughters and their mother grew frantic. He was a great dad, by the way, despite everything else. It does mention he was a great dad. Mm -hmm. Um, Calling Betterston for news. The girls would ask, did you hear from my daddy? Thomas said, we just kept praying he was all right. Carrie Banks, a close friend of Betterston's, accompanied her on searches of the neighborhood and watched distress and desperation war on her. She called someone every week and asked about her child, Banks said. She couldn't get it off her mind. She was crazy about that boy. Each time she called, police told her they had no information. They did because he was in the morgue and they had identified him because one of their own had killed him, hitting him as he crossed the highway. Turned out that the Jackson Police Department had the answers all along. The department did not respond to detailed questions and has not commented on or explained how it handled Dexter's death. After this article was published, a spokesperson for Jackson Mayor Chakwe Antar Lamumba emailed a statement to NBC News offering our sincerest prayers and condolences to the Dexter's (laughs) family. That's not even the worst. The spokesperson, Melissa Faith Payne, had an interview that police did not intentionally harm Dexter or his family. There was miscommunication, but there was no malicious intent anywhere in this whole incident, Payne said. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. (laughs) This account has been pieced together with interviews. Um, Basically, they have all the information. They pieced it together. So eight, just before 8 p.m., March 5th, Dexter is walking across Interstate 55, six lane highway, Jackson, Police SUV driven by an off-duty corporal strikes him in the southbound lane. The corporal, who alerts police to the collision, is not injured. He was not suspected being under the influence of drugs or alcohol, was not given field sobriety tests, nor is he cited for any traffic violations. Death is ruled accidental, which makes sense. You should not be crossing the interstate on foot. Um, Dexter suffered severe injuries, including to his head. Toxicology report later noted that Dexter had PCP and methamphetamine in his system. Of course he did. He struggled with drug addiction. Um, an investigator from the Hines County Coroner's Office responded to the scene. He did not find identification on Dexter while examining him, but did find a bottle of prescription medication in his pocket with his name on it. Three days later, 
March 8th, the investigator, LeGrand Elliott, contacted the medical facility that provided the prescription and received Betterston's name as Dexter's next of kin, according to Elliott's case notes. Elliott said he called the number listed for Betterston in the facility's records and left a voicemail, but got no response. Betterston confirmed that the number Elliott said he called was correct, but she doesn't remember receiving a call from him and was not able to access her Boost Mobile phone records to check. Chances are he never actually called. No. Elliot confirmed Dexter's identification on March 9th when the state crime lab said his fingerprints matched those it had on file for him. Elliot said in an interview that he passed what he'd found, a phone number and an address to the Jackson Police Department's accident investigation squad so they could notify better stamp Dexter's death. Once you get that information, I turn it over to police because it's their jurisdiction so that they can do the proper death notification, Elliot said. Betterston, meanwhile, turned to Facebook, where she's posting pictures of Dexter, her phone number, pleading for him, anyone who saw him to call. Yeah. Uh, on March 15th, the day after Betterston reported Dexter missing, Elliot followed up with the Jackson police for updates. No kin has been located as of yet, he wrote in his notes. Yeah. She called and asked, hey. And the detective said no kin has been noticed notified. And this is this again. This is this is what six days after the the next of kin has been identified. Yeah, and two week two weeks mm -hmm. two weeks right after she's reported him missing, Elliot then makes another follow up call, and is told there's nothing new. The following day, the coroner's office asked the Hines County Board of Supervisors for approval to bury Dexter's remains in a pauper's field at the Hines County Penal Farm. As that request was being filed, Betterston posted another photo of Dexter on Facebook. Board of Supervisors approves coroner burial request on April 3rd. Okay, again, she reports him missing on the 15th of March. Yeah, March March 5th, he was killed. This is a, this is a month later, yeah. So April 3rd, four days later, Elliot calls Jackson police. No new updates, he wrote in his notes. Again. May 7th. May 7th. We're now the following month. month. Yeah. Better stim posts on Facebook. Dexter, if you're out there, your kids miss you and your family misses you. We love you. We always love you. Two days after that, Elliot calls the police again for an update and is again told there are no updates. He tried one last time in June. And got the same response. So this medical examiner has now called what two, three, four, five, six, six times mm -hmm. to the police and been told we can't find the next of kin. And the whole time the next of kin is calling them saying they're missing. And don't forget the, the notes, his notes indicate who the next of kin is. Mm -hmm. They know they have identified who the, 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 the body is. They have yep. confirmed who the body is. They have confirmed who the next of kin is. And her phone number. They have the right phone mm -hmm. number for her. Because she keeps calling from it. No. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Jackson, um, Jackson June, Police, Mississippi. Yeah. June 18th was Father's Day. Better stand again. Pleads for Dexter on July 14th. No one claiming Dexter's body. County buries him in the penal farm field. Uh, meanwhile, on Facebook... On July 16th, Betterston posts again through the rest of July. Betterston said she called missing persons. Investigators got no news. The lead investigator told her he was retiring at the end of the month. And a new investigator called her August 13th to say she was taking over the case. So again, they had her number. Right. So now we have the missing persons investigator. Is like, oh, by the way, I'm retiring on the 13th. On the 24th of August. Which is almost five months. The new investigator goes, oh, we found Dexter and an officer will come by to see you. <coughs> yeah. The officer, a member of the X investigations unit, met Betterston at her mother's house. Uh, Betterston said she told her that Dexter had been hit by a police cruiser while trying to cross the highway. Um, she asked the investigator for more details. He told her to call a coroner's office. Betterston found Elliot. He told her he'd known Dexter's name since the day he died and had passed the information to police. And he told her about the pauper's burial. Betterston couldn't understand why police told her for months they didn't have answers. 
She wondered if it had anything to do with her brother's death and her allegations against the police in that case. Maybe it was a vendetta. Maybe they buried my son to get back at me. That's exactly what fucking happened. Yes. They knew because they knew. They knew who she was. They knew who he was. They knew the family. They knew the lawsuit. They knew the story. Yes. Yeah. She also says she doubts the timeline because the distance traveled wouldn't be enough for him to travel on foot in a half hour. Um, yeah. Anyway, she paid the corner, had to pay the coroner's office a $250 fee to claim his body. Mm. Okay. They knew where he was, who he was, who she was, where she was the entire time. Yep. And still waited six months to tell her. Because it was one of their own. Yep. It was it was retaliation. Anyway. All right. I'm glad we didn't I did, glad we didn't lead with that story. Yeah. No. Um, okay, let's let's throw a link and get out of here. Oh, if you want to see all the stuff that we can get you for way cheaper than if you just went and bought it <laughs> on your own, link check tree. out our link tree. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of discounts, whole bunch of connections to a bunch of really cool places that sponsor us. Um, yeah. There's, you know, RK Spookware. There's the Beard Struggle. There's Lions Not Dave. Sheep. There's Dave over at Poppins Patches. There's uh, Jeremy Reaper at the Brand Apparel. Jeremy Copy. at the Quartering. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff, and they're all connected to us. And most of the stuff gives you really cool discounts if you use the cool links, and uh, oh. you get to again, you get to support us, which is super amazing. And uh, you also get you know stuff that you want and uh, get it for cheaper than you would otherwise get it. Yep. Um, all right. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Awesome. Maybe well, that was a down way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got I got I got I don't know. Uh, maybe the handicap accessible glory hole uh, has really been just the friends that we've made along the way. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!